Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Hope y'all are having a wonderful Sabbath. As y'all come in, you see we just vibing. Shabbat Shalom. Please come in and share the feed. Welcome to my father's people, to the 12 tribes of Israel. Shabbat Shalom, Jalen. I keep Shabbat Shalom, Mama. Hey, everybody, welcome on. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom to everyone that will be coming on. I am so thankful for being alive. Today was a good that's, day. That's a smooth rule right here. Yeah. I woke up today. So many cases to the same. I can't like complain. Yeah, more friends. We find some no deal. In a bump in a row, you did too. When you thought you had it under control, whether you win or lose, or you stuck with your soul, focus on eternity. Happiness comes and it goes. Brand you see a miracle when they right under your nose. Yeah, I'm gonna say you damn it all. Yeah, you started breathing. She buys you long. This one for the world. This one for the world. I'll be back with you. I'll be back with you. She buys you long, daddy. She buys you long. They requested you on the Sabbath. Now you're about to quit. Like Y'all, please come in and share the feed. Please share the feed. I said, right, I'm going to share this next. I'm going to go get the fame real quick. Y'all, come in and share the feed. Share the feed. Yeah, I'll be right back. I got to go get the fame. So many cases of Everybody. We're so excited to be before you today. We're just giving them some praise. We are so grateful to be alive. Never despise the Father's correction. I learned to love it. Carnal minds don't want the truth. They want their version of it. Worldly wishes are temporal. I noticed them turning colors. His treasures are never tarnished. Started to study harder. It made me a better artist. They asking me what's your secret. He fed you manna from heaven. You want to run to God. So the shop was like, am I really my brother's keeper? You are if you love your people. We live in like kamikaze, ambulances, cops, and sirens. When we gon' stop the violence? Quote the scripture, it's an awful silence. I can sing a song that it come to climate. Don't just talk about it, we walk about it. The covenant, our fathers forgot it. We remember now it's a door for the sheep to enter. Believe on Christ and you gon' be saved. I'ma keep it simple. Get that Holy Spirit and you will jump it in. Woke up today. Y'all, anybody know me know I'm a real hip hop head. So when it comes to that boom bap, when it comes to that neo soul hip hop, hey, you can't miss me right there. When you when you talking about lyrics, that that's you'll find me right there. That's that's been my genre right there. I'm going ahead and sharing the feed with everybody. I hope y'all have had a uh, wonderful week so far. I'm just sharing here. Oh boy. Yeah. A little more time. Come on in, y'all. I love this truth. We begin our online experience. Can't believe we the chosen. We don't know. Just hold on. Yeah. Uh. This little light, I'ma let it shine. Like that jail. That's what I'm talking about, Daddy. I had to make sure I get that to you. His name is uh, The Rock Abar. Daddy like that jail. That's what 
that was a nice jam to come in on too. Yeah, the line. Daddy said play that jam again. That's the second one that I made. That's the second one that I made. We're gonna run that back for you, Dad. We're gonna play that again. That, that was pretty nice, Dad. Trying to see if maybe y'all can hear me now. Let's 
see if you can hear me, let me know. Okay, there we go. All right, I see we have OBS uh, disconnected. All right, so the program disconnected and then came back. Yeah. All right, good deal. Good, good. All right, there we go. Y'all, I apologize. The uh, system, it disconnected on its own. I guess it was doing some updates without me knowing. And so uh, now we're back. Thank y'all for sticking it through. Boom, there it is. Right. So Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Thank y'all for joining us today. Uh, as we dive back into a series, well, I can't even call it a series because it wasn't playing. It's just something that Abba Yah put upon your heart to start this thing out. And then, what was wrong? I was just trying to see the message that came through, so I was calling. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I thought something was wrong. I'm sorry. I, I could <laughs> tell that something was wrong because you was talking to me, so I was like, let me get out of here. Oh, no, no. I was looking at it, but I seen your face turn. I thought something was wrong. No, you I was trying wrong. to hear you to make sure everything was <laughs> But, uh, Okay. It was a uh, uh, it was birthed out of Abba speaking to Shemur or some things, and we was all just going through this place where our faith, our emunah, was being tested. And then we started a Bible study with it. I gave out TGCB some homework, and man, we had a good experience this this Wednesday uh, going over the homework where everybody did it because everybody came with different scriptures. And their interpretation of the word, but everything lined up. Right. But it just goes to show that he reveals unto us um, accordingly. Yes. Yes. Y'all, um, things are going to look different for us. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Jones. Abba Yah has shown us some uh, favor for the last... Uh, uh, he's, he's had favor with us our entire ministry. I was just going to say for the last, uh, what, five and a half years yeah, now? Yeah, five and a half years we've been in ministry, um, and we've had the privilege of building some solid relationships. We've had uh, the support of people. Come in. Um, we've had both the opportunity to have website, online, and building. Mm -hmm. um, and with this new this new season, <laughs> hey, hey, y'all. With this new season of, of instruction and obedience, the Father has drawn us out of the building uh -huh. and into a virtual experience only. Right. Now, that was something that uh, I think I struggled with, but I found that it was because I was things were, but the Father had just kind of really resonated in my spirit that he was bringing things, and this was before today, this was this was probably 2020, uh, when he really resonated this in my spirit, that he was bringing back the worship and his presence, the essence of a relationship in the household. Mm -hmm. um, and so everyone could not, hey, you look so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> everyone couldn't um, ride the building and in, in, in the, the set of this church as a um, safety net of being a follower of him. He was bringing everything back to every man's own temple and their own home. So, you know, as scripture said, you know, as for me and my house, you can. As for me and my house, we shall serve Yahuwah, the Most High. Right. But uh, uh, the issue that I, I come to notice is that what we do, again, comes out of not righteousness into Yah, but into self-righteousness. So going to church became a ritual, a checkbook, a, a mark that allowed us to feel comfortable about our lack of contribution because giving to church was enough. Gotcha. The Father said, no, 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 no. There is an essential functioning uh, as a believer. And you can go to church all you want to, but you're coming home to a nasty house. Mm -hmm. You're coming home to a filthy house. You haven't cleaned up your inside. You haven't sanctified your natural. You haven't sanctified your, your dwelling space. So you go to church to give you the peace of mind that you're doing something that's supposed to give you the credit uh, as opposed to doing the real work. Right. The real work, the, the personal, the internal work. And when COVID came and everybody was forced to be at home, uh, you could understand how people managed and how they struggled with their faith because of where they put the stock of their faith. 
right? They put it in being able to do these actions and so check out this. Treasure is not yes, in the earthly business. but not necessarily in the individual work, right? Right. So when they couldn't talk to, reach out, sit, touch, and be amongst their pastor, their bishop, their apostle, or, or whoever you want to call it, they were lost. And I mean in a huge way lost. That shows that people are missing the essential element of being a, a, a follower of the Most High. Yeah. And the Father said he will separate the tear from the wheat from the tear. Right. Well, I just know what he's doing in our ministry is a blessing. He's going to allow us to teach more and reach more. He's going to allow us to continue to take our, our ministry to the next level of glory in him. Um, and so we are excited for the new chapter. Changes amongst us. Change yes, will continue and, to come. And we're definitely going to make this, uh, we're looking to expand this online uh, experience and make it more interactive and a, uh, uh, a just a whole brand new what? refreshing feel. And I'm excited about it. I am too. It's a call of accountability. Yeah. It's a call of accountability. What he is removing the excuses that people put in place of being faithful. And I'm so glad that we are in the in the subject of faith because many people believe they have it and they do not. Mm, or may not really understand how this word they they faith they have works. been operating in in the grace and in the mercies of the okay, Father. Okay, said. The mercies of the Father that allows us to not fully succumb to the error of our ways so that we may get the blessings, the lessons out of it. Right now, hey, listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, I had to check myself before I wrecked myself. I'm not over here talking like I had it all together, like I never had an issue or that my faith walk is perfect. Oh, no, no, no. But thank you, Abba Yah, for the revelation, for taking us off of this milk and allowing us to grow so that we can have the strong meat. Right. You're gonna need strong meat in these end days. Oh, yeah. You, you, you're gonna need it. And some of us, we have been on the milk so long, we're malnourished. Yes. We, we're not eating. We are just coasting with one foot in and one foot out, with a double mind. And the Father saying, listen, choose ye this day mm -hmm. whom ye shall serve. I present to you life or death. You know, with you saying that, that's a good point for us to pray yes. and dive into this thing. All right. Abaya, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Forgive us if there's anything in our heart or our mind or our spirit that's not like you. Anything that we may have said or thought about or acted upon that is not worthy of you. Every day we have new kin and chesed, grace and mercy. Every day you give us new shalom, peace. But every day is an opportunity for us to live on imunah. What are our minor Do we really understand it? Do we really gather what you're teaching us through Torah? Or are we just leaning on what we were told throughout our religious experience? Thank you for waking us up, Abayah. Decrease us so that you may increase. And use us to help wake up Jacob, help wake up Israel to help wake up the 12 tribes so that we will know who our Elohim is, our Elohika, our Elohim. And we shall live by your Torah, your law. And we shall know without wavering who you are, who we are, what we possess. And we shall stand firm knowing that you are so Shema Israel, Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Eka. You are one Elohim. Amen and Shalom. Amen and Shalom. All right, Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. So, jumped out. I set it up over there too because it's gonna be weird right there. I know you close up. If you wanna go in that space um, and eat and, and all those good things. Um, and if it gets weird for you over there, let me know. You are you are welcome to stay yeah, right here. You, you can come sit right here. On the other side. So we can have to honey move. I'm actually good right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, but thank you. Today.
John Bill coming in here. Who you catching, John Bill? I don't do my John Bill. John Bill trying to catch somebody. She is a virgin. Yeah, All right. I love it. <laughs> Listen. So. I'm excited to dive in. I know you're getting ready to say something. No, I'm, I'm going to segue for you. Gotcha. Well, here's the thing. Let's just go into it then. All right. So, Imuna. Imuna. When we were in Bible study, we, I had TGCB do some homework here on Imuna. Hopefully, y'all can see that. And we we drew and we wrote practice our letters, our pictograph, our ancient, modern, I mean, modern and paleo of the word imuna and how you spell it. And when you go to Hebrew, you read from uh, uh, right to left. Mm -hmm. And so this spelled out the word imuna. And so we understand when we looked up the word, the attributes of this word, other, just than, other than just hearing faith, here is what imuna means. If you look in your Strong's lexicon, H. 529, oh man, it's so dope to see it up there. So, see if you can see it. H529, the word faith has these to do with it. Confirm. Uh, Y'all looking for uh, cups up in the cabinet? Oh, you can do it. We have the word means confirm, support, nourish, sure, establish, verify. Reliable, faithful, trusty, believe. Because in some of your Bibles, when you read it, don't say the word faith that says believe. And stand firm. All of this have to do with this biblical word, this word that Abaya gave us, imuna, faith. And we've got to talking about it because when you mention this word, everybody is going to give you the world-renowned faith is the substance of things hoped for, yet the evidence of things not yet seen. Okay, we understand. But when you dive deeper into this, every element of Torah, every element of your life, every element of you reading and breaking down the word, you are going to find these words that I said, you're going to find that imuna, faith, has everything to do with how you function and how you live. It, it is so prevalent. It is so serious. It is so much engulfed and intertwined in everyday life that there is something that Shemur is going to say there is a scripture that's going to back up just how important faith is to your every waking moment. All right. Well, thank you. And y'all forgive me for moving around. Um, we have children and, and guests. So a part of Johnny and I attending to the ministry is going to call for us to move around from time to time. That's all right. All right. So, yeah, thank you so much for the segue. So, I, I actually want to back up because you said something earlier mm -hmm. that we have, uh, we're in a season where we're being tested in our faith. But you know, the essential element of a follower is to have faith. Every day we are awake, we are tested in our faith. Whether it's on a recognizable scale, something that's big and impossible, or it's on a small scale, something that's essential to the quality of our life or our, or our being, or just the roof over our head, the food we should eat, those promises that he has, calls for an element of faith. Now, um, whew, got that hot. I can't put that on the lips. Got that smoke coming out of that coffee like ain't nobody be. Woo. <laughs> it is smoky. Woo. Smoky. Can y'all feel the smoke? Hey, boy, you see the hot come out. Look, that's yeah, yeah, look, look, look. You, you put that on your lips. That's going to be like fire. No when Father put that coal on I'm the lips, you. <laughs> I purified your lips. Look at it. But, you know, so we got to get back to understanding faith so that we can live it practically. Mm -hmm. It's not something that we should be, to, we shouldn't have to try so hard for it. Mm -hmm. It should be a, a and we're going to get into it, a part of who we are. It's like, 
faith is on display in so many ways. Our children have faith. They, they exhibit that faith every day because of the credibility that they have established with us as their parents. So to honey, she's five years old. I don't have to convince her every day that I'm mommy. She knows. She knows. Jay doesn't have to convince her every day that he's dad. She knows. So she responds to us according to her knowing that we are that. Because it is established. It's established. So when she gets afraid, concerned, worried, the faith part of her, which is already established in our relationship, will send her to us in her panic, in her fear, in her, her worry. It's an automatic thing. She don't have to go through everybody around the corner first. She don't have to contact. She knows in our relationship that we have established a, a credibility that we would do what? We would protect her. We would provide for her. We will rescue her. Now, y'all, we're, we're natural. We're not all-knowing and ever-present. That's the father. But if we had the same faith that Tahani has, then the all-knowing part will allow us to move the way Tahani is moving with us. Right. we we got to recognize that I'm not convincing her day in and day out. She made a decision. She was, she was put into an environment, and she chose it. She chose to receive me as mommy and, and, and Johnny as daddy. She might not have articulated it that way, but the relationship established it, right? So it's established that I'm mom, that Jay's dad, and she's dark. So much so that she comes to us for the things that a mom and a dad promises to give, even though we never fully articulated those things to her. When she wants something, she comes and asks mommy and daddy, can I have this? When she needs something, when she's not feeling well, she the established belief of who we are to her is locked in that it doesn't matter where she is or what's going on, it does not change. Now, he tells us to have childlike faith because they don't have to fully understand to grasp the connection and the credibility and the relationship. This is what is happening uh, for believers, for real believers, for true followers of, of the Most High, is that we have now established ourselves in Him mm -hmm. and Him in us, right? And so last week, just to go back, we, we broke down Imuna. We broke it down. For those of you who missed last week, I want to encourage you to go back and watch the video um, on Facebook on our TGCB page or either one of our pages. We have it posted. Now, we, we, we broke it down from the Strong's uh, function of H530. So that's H530. Imuna, which means literally firmness, figuratively security, and morally fidelity. Now, I know those are some, some sharp words, but we're going to make this simple. This is talking about being immovable in your belief, being secure in that belief, and being uh, faithful, as in you won't cheat on him. You won't trade him off for a more appealing fal a false idol or, or God, right? right? And so we broke that down. And if you are looking at, at the screen, let's just read it here today. Hebrew for faith. Uh, Ibuna is Hebrew for faith, mm -hmm. trust, or faithfulness. It also has a Greek term. And you're going to learn this as you're going through your uh, Blue Letter Bible, that when you get more to the New Covenant, you're going to see a lot more of the Greek words, right? But you can still backtrack that to the root of the Hebrew word that it was pulled from, okay? Right. Um, but it's pistis. And this is, again, showing a function of faith um, in terms of it being an integration of the heart. Mind, soul, and strength when you put in your, your trust in, in, in Yah. What we determined in the Hebrew yeah, was that it fish. meant that the strong leader, which is Yahuwah, will carry us through the chaos, which is the things that are around us, which secures us, when we trust him to carry us, <coughs> secures us for the inheritance that will be uh, revealed. Mm -hmm. Now, it's much bigger than your natural needs, your natural expectation, and your natural desires. The inheritance is something that the world can't give. So when you start thinking about, let me have faith so I can get a house. Well, the world can give you a house. Mm -hmm. 
Let me have faith so that I can get a car. Well, the world can give you a car. Let me have faith so I can have money. Well, the world can give you money. Mm -hmm. So that should not be the, the substance of your faith. You have to understand that the promises at the end of your faith, the reward at the end of your faith, is, not, is, is much bigger than your natural desires and your natural needs. So why let your essence of your faith be rooted only in that area? No, this is talking about how the heaven and earth will fade. Right. It's going to pass away. And then what now? When that earthquake comes through and it rattles the ground and it eats up your house, what now? Right? When the storms come and it flood out these natural things, what now? No, we as followers of the Most High have to be set apart from the things of this world and our relationship with Him has to be rooted in something that can't be seen yet. Yeah. It has to be rooted in Him. The hope for the, the things to come, the promises. Y'all, this is getting you from Genesis to Revelation. The Aleph and the Tav. Like, Revelation is about the, the reward of those who diligently seeked Him and served Him. The reward of those who were faithful, the reward of the evil not, it was the uh, well done my good and faithful servant. He tells us in Revelation what all this suffering is bringing us to. Redemption, deliverance, uh, uh, restoration, reward, all of that's in Revelation. But many of us aren't getting to Revelation because we still stuck on I'm believing in the Father for this amount of money. Civil war even. I have a spoon, but... Okay. Going this way? Yeah. All right, y'all. We shuffling and bustling. Shuffling, scooching around. But y'all have, have, have uh, patience with, with, with our, our transition, okay? <laughs> We're going to be set up a little bit differently. Um, we weren't expecting anybody to come to the house today. So we set up in a place that um, isn't as convenient as it will be. Uh, we were set in a different location last week. So again, we're working it out. Now, uh, let me get back to it. So we're, we're talking about the function of Imuna, right? And the function of Imuna. We learned last week, and that's just a quick recap, that it is made up of the uh, Hebrew alphabet, the, word, the letters Aleph, Mem, Wav, Nun, and He. We also learned that there is a root word, which we, we've come to know as amen, a, a moon, if I'm saying it correct. And that, and that is the Strong's letter H, or the strong word function, H539. The root word of it means to build up or support, to trust or believe, to be permanent or quiet. So the root word of our faith is telling us that our faith is going to build us up or support us. It is going to be the essential trust or belief, and it's going to be fixed. It's going to be permanent. All right, so now we kind of get into where we're going today. Uh, what I want to ask you is really consider, this ain't to tear you down. This ain't to destroy your hope. This is to just have you consider, self-examine for just a moment. Do you really have faith? Right? Have you really thought about that? Do I really have faith? Or have you been moving in what looks like faith that you've observed from other people? Like, do you know in your inside, do you know as you as in your walk that you have faith? Now, why am I asking you that? Because if you know you that faith is a principal thing. Meaning, it's not something that changes because your circumstances change. Remember, faith is a fixed thing. Right. He gives it to us in measure. And sometimes we have to grow in our mindset change to recognize, you know, the Father. But the, that's, part of the, that's part of the result of faith. Because faith is not wishing for something. It's not even just hoping for something. No, 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 no. We have hope wrong as, as for when it comes to followers. Hope is an expectation, not a wish. Okay. It's an expectation of the Father to do what he said he was going to do in your situation, even though it looks like this and even though it feels like that. Right. So I'm, I'm going to take us to Scripture. Okay. okay. If you can, Hebrew 11 and 6. And we're going to go through 6 and 7. All right. Ephraim, 
-hmm. Let's go ahead and uh, put that there. So I'm going to type this in so y'all know where we're coming from. Hebrew. 11. 6 through 7. That's right. 11. 6 through 7. So we are breaking down faith while he's pulling that up. We're breaking it down because somewhere in our walk, we got the outer exterior um, idea of faith, mm -hmm. but we hadn't got the internal breakdown of faith that allows us to really move mountains, that allows us to really um, walk in the fixed position of the Most High. Gotcha. See, I will say before I read this, I'm sorry, you got something? No, I was, go was going to go ahead and read it. Okay. Before he reads this, the thing that, that really called me to consider is kind of recognizing that when it comes down to our faith, many people are using faith as a way for Yah to prove he's Yah. Right? I'm going to believe so hard that he will do this, and that will be a sign to me that he's real, that he heard me, that he's with me. And that is the letdown for a lot of people because faith don't work like that. He don't have to prove himself to you. He is that he is. I am that I am. I'm the great I am. He has no limits that we in our human minds, heart, or soul can put on him. Yeah, He's so much bigger. Don't, 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 don't get that joke. Just how he, to, where he, were you? He didn't, I, say, <laughs> he didn't say, I have to prove to you. He did say, taste and see. That I am good. That I am good. Complete. Taste and see. Now... We have this mindset that if the Father does this, then we know that he's with us. But we got to understand, the world can give some of the very things we ask the Father for. The world has a process and a system. Mm -hmm. And the enemy will present to you a false image of promise to get you to forfeit the process and to forfeit your what? Your established fixed position in the Father. So what am I talking about? Before we get in here real quick, I just want to complete my, my point. He came and tested Yahoo, uh, Yahusha in the wilderness when he was what? On that 40-day fast. After that 40-day fast when he was should have been really hungry, should have been really tired. He came at what he thought was his weakest point. Mm -hmm. And he tested him. And he gave and showed to him an image of a kingdom. And told him that he could rule over it if he would just choose him. Choose and serve me. You can have the kingdom now and not later. Yeah. But he was already, Yahusha, hallelujah, was fixed in his position with the Father. That he already knew that that should not compare. That It shouldn't compare. Like the suffering he would go through to get it later would not compare to this, this thing you're trying to show me now. He knew the trick in it. And many of us have forfeited we just chose the, the temporary gratification, the relief. We took what the world had to offer because we didn't want to suffer the process of receiving the reward that the Father showed us pertaining to vision, pertaining to purpose. Okay? But thank you, Abba Yah, for, for mercy. Because here we are today. Now, uh, Jay, if you could go ahead and read Hebrews 11. says this but without belief or without imuna, without faith it is impossible to please him for he that comes to Yahuwah must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him Woo. verse 7 why was verse 6 so important? Yeah, I was going to say, pause on 6 real quick. Okay. No, no, you, you okay. can say what you can say. Why verse 6 is so important? Abba Yah never speaks without giving you an answer. You just have to slow down and actually do what he said. Go line upon line and precept upon precept. And in all thy getting, get an understanding. So what we're about to do is get an understanding of what he just said in verse 6. Well, what are we trying to understand? We're trying to understand that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. So, why is it impossible? Because, here's an example. 
of what faith does for you. Verse 7. By faith, by imuna, by belief, Noah, being warned of Elohim, of things not seen as yet. Again, look at it. Faith, we ask people about faith. Faith is the substance of things not yet seen. Yet the evidence. All right. So, Father is backing it up. By faith, by establishment, by trustiness, by firmness, by reliability, Noah, being warned of Elohim, of things not yet seen as yet, moved with fear, not scary, but reverence, honor of Father, moved with the reverence and honor, and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He saved his house. Other houses could have been saved, but they chose not to operate in Imuna, faith or belief. And so he saved his house by the which he condemned the world. Who condemned the world? Abaya. And became, Noah became heir of the righteousness which is by faith, by belief. By Imuna, by yes. establishment. Hallelujah. That's just one example. And and here's the thing about this. So why do we bring this out? We brought this out because we quote for without faith it's impossible to please Yah, but we stop right there. Yeah. We don't go on to the part that says in order to have faith, two essential things must be present in your faith at all times. That you believe that he is. Mm -hmm. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I say that? Because that's a function of your faith. Some people don't diligently seek him, but have a wishing spirit. They don't. You don't believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So what you do is wait for hard times to come, then you cry out unto him. As soon as things get good, you forget all about him. Mm -hmm. There's not. A, there's no diligence there, because a. You are wanting what you want any way you can get it. Now, how do I know that to be true? Because many of you can't tell the difference between when the enemy gave it to you and when the father did. You can't tell the difference. All you know is you got it. But it did not last. And not only did it not last, it brought what? Hardship, trouble, dis-ease, brokenness. It brought everything. Dysfunction. Dysfunction. Why? Because you took the, the, the imitation of what you wanted because you refused the process of the Father to get what would what would add things good and perfect into you. So what was the process, though? The process is what knowing, is first of all, having the essential parts of your faith intact at all times. Okay. Knowing that he is, uh -huh. that Yah is, you got to really believe that, that he is, y'all, uh -huh. and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can I say something on that word? Yes. I'll wait for you to say uh -huh. that word right there, seek. Seek is an action. Action requires you to do. Mm -hmm. Do is a work. What am I saying? I am saying that faith, imuna, without Work is dead. Father just came back and said it to you plainly that, you know, he is a rewarder of those who diligently, diligently seek him. Meaning, this is an ongoing thing. I'm always seeking to make sure I'm doing Torah. I'm always doing something to make sure that I am in line with what you have set forth and in line with your laws. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not diligently seeking or trying to make sure I'm on the path to make sure what Father is saying is lining up in my Laval, then it lines up with what you're saying is that, who gave me this then? It's short-lived. I received a reward, but was it something that I diligently seek for? Or, or was this something that I obtained by the Word? And then we wonder why it crumbles. Because it was not established. Did we really have the faith that we thought we did or were we just speaking because we know the word says speak things that be not as though they were but what are you what is your foundation what are you rooted in when you begin to speak these things 
Because there's a scripture to back up what I'm talking about, about us being overzealous and just speaking, but not really having mm -hmm. the uh, 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 the wherewithal or the knowledge or the establishment or the security of the firm and the trust in the Father that when we begin to speak, that it is going to happen, even though we don't see it. And so when we begin to speak and it don't happen, we get this this downcast, uh -huh. oh, oh, man. We, 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 but maybe Father, we abandoned the thought. Well, maybe I did something. Yeah. Like, maybe Father ain't with me. It's been so long that the, the, the vision that the Father gave you, you said to yourself that maybe it wasn't what you thought it was. Maybe maybe you didn't see what you saw. Maybe you didn't hear what you hear. Maybe he didn't say this to you. You start letting people talk you out of the promise of the Father because you aren't firm. You are steadfast. You are immovable. Now, I say that because the whole point that I really want to bring out with uh, Hebrews 11 and 6, mm -hmm. am I to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll bring up that other scripture later, Matthew, about the, uh, yeah, yeah okay. I'll bring that later. Good deal. So, imuna, faith, is not based on reason. I'm going to say this again. Okay, reason with a king. Imuna is not based on reason. It ain't even based on logic. Okay? Reason can never attain the certainty of even not. Now, I'll say this. Since reasonably speaking, a greater reasoning might always come along and prove your reasons wrong. What am I just, what, what did I just say? If you try to base your faith on reason, there is going to be another reason that's going to make more sense than the reason you had when you first started. Which means you're going to be listening to a different Torah. That's right. It's so going, laws and instructions. It, that reason can be proven wrong in a season. Okay? Now, another function of, of having faith wrong is when you try to allow your faith to be established on you seeing it firsthand. You don't have to see it firsthand to believe it. You don't. He tells us to walk by faith and not by sight, which means what we see is in opposition of what he what? He told us. It's going to be in opposition of what we believe. So what? What are you saying? Sight is an enemy, is a tool of the enemy. Why do I say that? If you go back to the testing of Yahusha, he took him and showed him the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He didn't just tell him about it. And he walked the earth without seeing the kingdom and telling everybody that the kingdom of heaven was within. Everything that Who good can see the go. heart of man? We can't see the heart of man, only the Father can. He said man looks at the outer. Abba Yah looks at the inner. So what he was establishing was when it comes to our faith, it is in direct opposition of what we see. Seeing allows us to reason with what we see, which again can be false evidence appearing real. Y'all, fear is just not an emotional thing. It's not that feeling you get when you are afraid. No, it is anytime false evidence appears real. Anytime opposition has come against what the Father has put in the inside of you to propel you to purpose and vision and a fixed position with Him. Man. We talked about fear in the spooky sense of fear. Is, is this making sense? Does this make sense? I, I, yeah, I, I hope y'all are following me. It, it, many of us, I'm, I'm so sorry. No, no, you're say, good. Many of us have not reached the next level of glory because we've accepted the false evidence appearing real. What is the false evidence appearing real? You were counting on your bank account to establish you to do a business. You were counting on the approval of man for the calling over your life. That's false evidence appearing real. You were dependent upon who was approving you instead of who has affirmed you when he knew you before you was in your mother's womb. Absolutely. You have depended on what you see and what man has to offer, what the world has to position to walk in what the Father has called you in, and it's going to steer you wrong every single time. Come on now. It's the false evidence appearing real. It's not the spooky sense of, ooh, I'm scared. Yes. Y'all, that is the trick of the enemy. Yes. No, when you don't move your feet, then you have yielded to false evidence appearing real. Because why didn't you take the step? It's, it's like when he brought them out. Brought brought our, uh -huh. our, our people out. Yes. Coming out of uh, edges, right? And we were going, Father told us we have to fight to possess our land. 
We had to go in. There was people already occupying our land. We had to go in and take it, buy it and take it by force, right? Mm -hmm. We passed through a place called Kadesh. It looked good. It was beautiful. It had everything we needed. But it was not the promised land. Oftentimes, like you said, sight can create an illusion. It looks good. But oftentimes your dreams and your promises die in Kadesh. You never make it to the promise because this, this illusion to you, you get caught up in and you become content. I'm good right here. This got to be it. I don't want to go no further. I'm good just like this. And Father's saying, but this ain't what I said. Yeah. This ain't what I told you. This is not the promise. You're getting distracted. What I have for you, you have to go a little further. You got a little more journey to go. And you, I told you, you have to fight to possess yours. This is not easy. Everything that I give, you're going to have to do a work for. This right here, this is just a pass-through moment. I just want you to see a little glimpse of what it's going to be. I never said that this was the promise. We get lost in translation. And we begin to malfunction when we was on a perfectly good path of functioning. And when we begin to malfunction, that is a great sign of being disobedient and not really following the law of what Father told us to do. And then we get upset. Mm -hmm. And we'll get mad with the Father foolishly. But I thought you said that, and you said that you promised me this, and you said that whatever I ask in your name, and you said if I just believe in your son, yeah, I did say that. But I also told you to be obedient mm -hmm. and follow my instructions. Did you follow my instructions. In other words, this thing that has been pressed upon your heart. Are you credible? Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, I'm just that boy. Are you guilty of being credible of following what I said to do? Uh -huh. Or did you take it upon yourself to follow your own doctrine and lead towards your own understanding and get caught up in Kadesh? Get caught up in what you see versus what I said. It's a difference. Go on. So, a couple of things. Hallelujah. So, we, we, we were sitting here talking, um, I, I want to pull something out. So we're talking about false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. If you can, go go to 1 John 4 and 18. Yeah, who could not? Uh-huh, 1 John 4 and 18. Right there. We're we going to show you how, how, this, how this whole faith thing works. I'm going to type it in. There's going to be a day one day where I'm just going to be putting the Hebrew words in. Like, what is that? Uh -huh. I've been with us long <laughs> enough. You know what I'm talking about. Yahukanon, my name, John. Yahukanon, what? Eight, uh, uh, four, four and 18. First, first John. Okay. First John, first four, John 18. four and 18. Okay, let me let me go back and put. There we go. Put right there. Rishon. Yahukanon, Rishon, which means first. All right. There we go. When you, when you get to it. I'm here already. It, okay. it says, there is no fear in Ahava, love. But perfect Ahava cast out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in Ahava. Woo! Hold on, wait a minute. Okay, so why am I bringing this out? False evidence appearing real. This fear. There is no fear in love. Why is that important? Turn with me. Uh, go ahead and pull up 1 John 5, 1, 1 through 5. Okay, I'm already there. 1 John 5. Put this on in here for y'all to read. I'm going to copy this. So I ain't got to type it out. I'm going to copy and We paste. may not have to read all of 1 through 5, but... Do a little copy and paste right here. 1 John 5 and 2. That's what I want. Okay. 5 and 2. And 3. 2 and 3. <laughs> I'm going to read all of it. No, 1 John morning, two, 2 and 3. <laughs> 2 and 3. There we go. Alright, so it says, by this we know that we ahava as the children of Yah. We know that we love the children of Yah. When we love as Yahuwah and guardeth his commandments, for this is ahava, this is love of Yah, that we guard as his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Ooh, okay. And for, for everyone born of Yahuwah overcomes the world. All right. 
I just I, I put that on there to put that little stamp, that little mm, mm, that boom on it. Okay, what 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 just happened here? So we have to recognize love in the eyesight of the Father. So when He tells us perfect love drives out fear, He's talking about obedience. See what 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 He's saying is false evidence appearing real will not make you disobedient because you love Him. And the love you have for him won't allow you to be disobedient, even if false evidence appearing real is around you. Okay. Because it is. Right. It's always around you. It absolutely is always around you. There is always an opportunity to do right and an opportunity to do wrong. An opportunity to walk in your belief. And, and, and guess what? You walk in your belief whether you know it or not. We said this so many times. You behave your belief. What you do is lie to yourself when you don't own the fact that you walk in the way you believe. Yeah. So when you don't follow instructions, when you are disobedient, you are behaving your belief. What are you saying? That your fear is mispositioned. Hmm. Your fear and reverence for the Father is not as strong as your fear and reverence is to what? The other chieftain. The other one that is ruling your mind and your heart right now, whether it is to gratify your flesh, whether it is to, to bring you some temporary relief, whether it is to make you feel better than you are, uh, ought to feel, whether it is to put you in a position of, of power, love, lust, and, or whatever in this world, you are serving, and you are choosing whether you're not choosing, right? So when we understand that the love is in the obedience then we understand that it doesn't matter how you feel, you still have to do. And when you separate the feeling from the obedience, then you're going to walk in love and it will not fail you, right? Because it's going to bring you back around to faith because now you are established in him because your obedience did not waver when the circumstances around you did. Mm, that's good. Love, love is the greatest of the commandments. It is. It's the greatest. And when you love yourself, and you love your neighbors as you love yourself, then you're fulfilling to the greatest. But the love has to first be established in what? The Father. So when you love yourself enough to follow the commands, then you're going to learn how to love your neighbor because you're going to operate in wisdom and love and compassion. You're going to operate in a sense of, of friendship that will bring somebody into the knowing of the Father because he, they can see him in you. Here, here's the realistic of that word you keep saying. That I have out that love, everybody don't have a real grasp on how that word actually functions. That's another teaching. We're not going to get into it. Because that's a whole other teaching because there are, we throw it out. We quickly throw that, oh, I love you, I love you. But it's just the word that's thrown out. Mm -hmm. But Father kept saying, but if you love me, you'll follow my commandment. It's, it's, it's much more than just a word. There is a deeper root and connection in it for us to understand so that we can honestly walk in it. But that's for another teaching. Yeah. Because some people really need to understand it because some people may not even know how to love themselves. Right. And you expect others to love you when you don't even love yourself. You don't know how to love yourself. So that's a deeper teaching coming to you soon later on when Father says so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's bring this back around to what, we, what we're really trying to help you understand is the evil knife that you have to have to separate and to please the Father, to separate yourself from the world and to please the Father, is one that is established, okay? Is one that is established on two principal things, that you believe that Yah is He, that mm -hmm. He is, and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So you understand that you, in order to get to the top, the end result of your faith, that you have to diligently seek Him. And then the other thing is that your faith is the the fixed position in the Father that says, I will not waver when my circumstances change. That I don't have to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. And that I don't have to, um, I don't have to, he don't have to prove to me that he is. I know that he is. I've seen that he is. I've experienced him. So now what I'm going to do with my faith is show him that I'm a credible steward. What do you mean by that? Because when you become obedient to the instructions of the Father, you now become credible. Yeah. You become trustworthy, right? That is always instruction that the Father is going to give you to reach your purpose place. There's always instruction. So if you don't have instruction on how to get there, then you hadn't saw him. Mm -hmm. You hadn't saw him. He's going to give you instruction. He's going to tell you when to turn left, when to turn right, when to stay put, when to go back. when to. Do. He's going to tell you all of those things, and it's going to guide you. 
Now, what we come to understand is sometimes we get a glimpse of the vision and we throw him out the window and we do it our way because we're leaning to reason and logic now. We're saying, okay, in order for me to have this, I must first do this, 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 and I need to do this and do this and do this and do this and do this. And the father said, well, wait a minute, I just showed you a glimpse of the vision. And remember, he shows man vision in part. He don't give you all of it, he gives you a piece of it, right? And then he puts you in a position where you got to prove yourself credible. You got to diligently seek him for that thing. You got to diligently seek him so that it won't overtake you when the enemy presents to you the false evidence appearing real, when he gives you an imitation version. Now, what are we talking about? There are going to be some situations that are all about positioning. It's not about the tangible thing. It's about a position. So you have to go through some suffering that's required to get you to the position. What am I saying? We know this because he did it in Joseph. It took Joseph to be thrown in a ditch and left for dead, pulled out of the ditch and put up for, uh, to be sold, put into slavery, going into jail. Right? He went into all these things before he could do what? Land the position that allowed him to rule a nation even though he wasn't, quote unquote, the title ruler. So it, it, it is about the process. Now, process develops and calls out what lies dormant in you. So when you skip the process, you will be consumed by the promise. You won't be able to contain it, maintain it, enjoy it, and use it or give the Father the glory. It will devour you because you don't have what it takes yet. Just like King Dawid, he was in the wilderness. He was put to the test. He was separated from people that could have influenced his ear from the father as a young boy. He was set apart. He was out there fighting and he being trained by the He father knew as how a boy. to be a protector. He knew how to how to face the wild elements. So when he seen a giant, he didn't have the false evidence appear real to determine whether he was going to go in and do what he needed to do. He had an established position in the father. So when everybody else around him said he's too big, he's too strong, he killed so many, there's no way. We can't do it. Our armor, his, his sword, it's too heavy. We can't hold it. Right? They was like, I don't, this ain't nothing. I don't need that. I was trained up. What was lying dormant in me, the Father built up in me. So when the time met, I was able to overtake. He did the same thing with the children of Israel. Do you know what that, 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 you know what that thing was that was lying dormant? And it's real simple. It's real crazy. I'm not going nowhere crazy with it. But it's something I say all the time. Noon. Yeah. It was the seed. It was the seed. The seed has to go through a lying dormant state before you get the fruit. You, Where is it lying dormant at? In the soil. In the soil. It's being nourished. And then it breaks open. There it is. But, but, but it gets rooted it, first. It, 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 well, the roots break through the yeah. seed and it breaks open and it changes form. See, you, and then it starts to show itself. Right. It's changed you don't see what's happening on the ground, but it's being rooted. But you can show, feel it. Like, do you think that the seed had to die the, come, to transform? It had to be to ripped to shreds. It had to, it had to be broken in every way fathomable, in every way possible, so that it can be transformed. Yes. But y'all, he, he does that. He processes us in the midst. And it, it, it's, it's the process of faith. It's saying, okay, while I'm being broken, Metamorphic. while I'm being rooted, while my, 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 uh, my, my posture is being changed, while my form is being transformed, while I'm being transformed, there we go, better way of saying that, will I still remain secured in him? Will I still believe that he is? And will I still believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? Mm -hmm. And if I believe that, I won't stop seeking him, even though I'm broken, even though I can't identify with what I used to be, even though no one recognizes me, even though no one can see me right now, even though it's dark all around me, even though it hurts to get deep off in this word, even though it's a sacrifice to plant your, uh, pl to, to root up. It's a sacrifice. Y'all know what the rooting up is? It's the knowing of your word. It's the getting in your word. Word. It's the studying of your word. Some of y'all ain't studying your word so your roots don't run deep. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling You've been this. on the surface of your word for so many seasons that the Father said, okay, now listen. I'm glad you said it because I'm feeling this right now that there are people that are in a place that nobody can help you out of your transformation place. And this is solely have to be between you and the Father. Nobody understands it. Nobody will understand it. 
but you and the Father. And this is a lonely point right now in your life. Yeah. It is very lonely right now for you in your life because you, you're you going through something that the Father, and I'm not prophesying here and I'm not prophesying, but you're going through a point where it has to be Father and you. Mama, Daddy, Pastor, Shamor, John Bill, anybody cannot identify with where you are right now because this is strictly a wilderness moment where the Father is building you and trying to work out of you and work in you what you are going to have to need in this time coming. Only you, only you can go through this. And yes, you are going to feel so alone. You are going to feel like everybody in their mama has turned their back on you. And that's not the case. It's the fact that we are not ordained to go in and pull you out. This work. is going to be the furnace that you yourself and Hamashiach have to walk through. Well, here's the thing. You you can't say yes to him. Ooh, you can't without say being yes processed. to him. Now, now, here's the thing. He comes to us when we need him most, and he presents to us life or death. And most of us are going to choose life. We're going to say yes to him. We're going to be so excited. We're going to have such fervency in our spirit. We're going to be telling everybody we know about the goodness of the Most High. That's the, you know, that's that excitement phase. And then all of a sudden, here come the planting. All right. Got to drop you in here real quick. Now, I know it's going to be dark. I know it ain't going to feel good. I know nobody won't understand, but I got to put you in here because this is the soil. I got to plant you in me, and it's going to call you to be isolated. It's going to call you to find me for yourself, not because he said it, she said it, or they said it. You got to find me for yourself, and once you find me for yourself, you're going to notice that some roots are going to sprout out because now you finding me is going to connect you to my word that's going to fix your position. Now, what happens from that is I'm going to have some things that's going to come against you so that the things that are dormant in you can be developed through you. So you can see that I was with you all along. So that you can see that greater is he that is within uh, that is in uh, come on. Greater is he that is in me than he does the world. Than he does of the world. He's going to start pulling those things out of you so that you may see first of all that he's everything that he said he is. That he chose you. He says, my sheep know my voice. It is not by happenstance. It is not by uh, a coincidence that you heard him enough to say yes. He called you. Now, I, I know you got something to say. No, I'm, I'm going to give an example of my life, what Father, what I just realized, just got an understanding of, why he was speaking, because he was speaking so real to you. First him. That I just got a glimpse of my life, and I got to understand. So whatever you need to finish. Yes. Finish All I was going to say, because I don't want you to lose that, is that the process is designed to develop what is all he he gave us everything that we needed when we were born it was already in the inside of us this is about fulfillment and connectivity so what he's doing now is calling those things forward that need to be strong in the season that we're in so that we have the right weapons we have the right tools when he called a, a dawi king dawi forward he already equipped him with a slingshot and a rock who shows up to a war who shows up to the battlefield and didn't go through the process of getting all the equipment. Didn't get, didn't get your, didn't get your, uh, your armor. He came with what he was, what was built up in him because that's what he knew. That's what his trust was in. So even though nobody else understood it, he was at the point where what they had, which was outside of the Father, wasn't sufficient for the giant. He does that in each and every one of us. We're going to have a giant that we're going to have to slay with the bare minimum tools that that he's given us. So wherever you are in your walk with him, it's the right place to be. Whatever it is, you may not fight your battles the way that I fought my battles when he was bringing me through so that I could be fixed in him. But he's going to develop the right tools. Real quick, he took me through a, a, quick, a quick series of seeing the demonic forces. I was able to see demons. I had all kinds of what people would consider spooky things happen to me. And he taught me warfare first. It was necessary for me to be built up in that area so that I could walk better in this area, right? And Jay's going to tell you about, about how the Father did him. And so I'm going to move on out the way so you can you can bring that out because I know it's going to be good. When you, uh, when you was talking there, I got an understanding of 
the reason why father don't tell you everything right up front. Because if he told me that, hey, while I've called you, I remember him calling me as a little boy at Gospel Tabernacle. I think I may have been about a teen, no, eight or ten, one of them. And the, the guy that told me that I would be a pastor, I remember that. Now, he said that at a young age, but it wasn't until my latter years in my 30s when I became that. But as I become that, if Father would have told me that I would have to go through a period of where I'm lonely and I feel misunderstood, I don't really get to see a lot of my friends like that anymore. If you'd have told me that when I prayed the prayer to ask to feel the affirmities of the people so I know how to pray for them, if he would have told me that I would have to go through excruciating pain in my body to where I felt like I was going to die, would I have really prayed that prayer for Israel? Would I really pray that prayer to know how to pray for y'all? Would I really have prayed that prayer so that I know how to lead y'all? If I knew that I was going to go through near-death experience of catching COVID, having this illness in my body, but yet leading the people, and sometimes it get taxing and weary when you can't do nothing about it, when they in need, and you see them in need, and you feel that you can't do nothing about it. Sometimes you cry out because you see the people going through it while you yourself going through it, and your hands are tied. But I keep saying the word I. It ain't it ain't me that's doing it. It's the Father that uh is that chooses. Many are called but few are chosen. Father that chooses to use me to help. But if I'd have known that I had to go through all of this, go through financial woes, go through mental breakdown, because I had I was dealing with that. Go through stress in the body because I'm feeling the people. Go through not having answers in my own household. Go through a marriage where we were in marriage counseling three years straight. Go through an off and on. Yes, I love you. No, I don't. Don't get along. We don't like each other. I don't like you. This. But yet I'm called to this. If I'd have known I had to go through all of that, would I have said yes? And only I can answer that. I said that to say this. The Father don't tell you everything on purpose. Because a lot of us, if we knew what we have to go through to be what he said we are, we would abandon the call. We would become like our ancestors of old when he delivered them out. We would have Our mindset would have been stuck in that old slave mentality and we would have complained and murmured against the Father. That's why none of them got to reach the promise. He couldn't allow that to taint those babies that are coming up. I can't allow your mindset to taint them because I still call them to be what I call them to be. So I, un I got an understanding for my life of why Father could not fully tell me everything because I would have probably said no. Yeah. But I'm thankful for that now. Do I love going through the process? No. Do I like the pain? No. What person says yes? What person says yes, send me through hell? But we do say this without even thinking about it. Here I am, send me. Oh, yeah. Not counting up the cost. Not knowing that, all right, I said yes to you, but I'm going to have to endure. See, what it is, I don't know. That's the noble thing. Thank you. It's very noble to uh -huh. say things, we, we, but when you're really in the midst of it, this is where your imuna comes into play. Remember, I said something at the very beginning of this. Everything we do from the time we're born to the time we die has everything to do with this word faith. Being confirmed in him, supported by him, nourished by him, sure of him, established in him, verified by him, reliable on him, Faithfulness by him, trusting in him, believing in him, and standing firm in him. Absolutely. Now, the crazy thing is, 
what I love about faith, people, it is I want to make sure I say this because this isn't to discourage your faith. But it isn't faith. Faith isn't as hard as we make it out to be. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. And the reason why faith isn't as hard as we make it out to be is because faith is an innate thing. Mm. We have been born with a measure of faith. He, he it's already it's already in us. It's an innate thing. But what happens is faith is enhanced through hearing the word and experience. Okay. It's enhanced. It's nurtured. What happens is, if we don't get the nurturing of our faith, which is through the obedience of his instructions, right? Then we may remain divorced from his attitude and actions. That's why I say you behave your belief. So what, 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 what can I say about faith? So faith has a principal essence that's, that's there. It's an essence. It's, a, it's, it's there whether we didn't have to ask for it. Real faith has an essence of two things, and that's what's print, uh, brought to us through Hebrews 11 when he told, tells us that we have to be a believer that Yah is. And we also have to believe that he is a, re a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Why is that important? Because, again, faith leads you to an output. It's an input, an input that leads you to an output. And the output is the promise of the Most High. It's the, it's the inheritance to, that it will be revealed. So you have to have those two things intact for your faith to have anything to go off of. Because that means you're going to wrap that faith, that belief in the word, and you're not going to waver from it when your circumstances change. The other thing about your faith is you won't allow reason to dictate your faith. You won't allow reason and logic to, to speak to you about your faith. Because your faith is going to be intact regardless of what you see, feel, or hear. The last thing I want to bring out about faith is faith moves you to action. So if you are operating in true faith, remember I asked, do you have, do you really have faith? Then these three things will have been in place. If you really have exercised faith, then you believe that he is. There's no question about it. You also believe that he's going to reward you because you're going to diligently seek him. You're going to believe that without question, without hesitation, without delay. It's not going to change when the storm comes. It's not going to change when a person starts trying to talk you out of the vision, out of the promise, out of the purpose, out of the things that he's spoken into your spirit. No, out of the calling over your life. It don't matter that you were the only one who graduated from high school. It don't matter that you, you nobody in your family has ever been a priest or a preacher or a pastor or anything. It's not going to matter that you had to get speech lessons, that you got a stuttering, a stutter in your, in your speech. It's not going to matter that you're scrawny and short and small. It's not going to matter that you're the least amongst them. It's not going to matter because you have those two things that are already ruling in your heart. The, the second thing, the second thing is that you are willing to go through the process because you know that without it, you can't. You're willing to go through the process. The process comes to you as you go. It comes to you as you go. You always are built up first, and then the challenge comes. So you didn't know you were built up until you were challenged with it. When the challenge came, then you were like, oh, snap. I gotta do this, or I'm doing it, or it right it raises up in you. And yes, no, sometimes you, you yeah, sometimes you fail, but then you get right back up again. It's kind of like the, the the giant swung at you, and you stumble in your defense, only to realize that you had some skill. You was weaving, right? You you was right there. You got the bob and, you got the bob you got the bob and use your weave. Right. But then the other thing is, <laughs> you got the bob and use your weave. <laughs> but the other thing is. Because it's innate, your actions and attitude is going to always reflect the righteousness of the Father. It's not to say that you won't feel the feels. It's not to say that you won't have some good days and some bad days. It's not to say that. But your actions and your attitude is going to always come back around to righteousness. It's going to always do it. When you mess up, you are quick to seek the Father for forgiveness, those who diligently seek Him. That's what He's talking about. When you're in the thick of it, when you feel that fear in your spirit, are you going to the Father that's diligently seeking Him? When you are confused in your mind and you call that scripture that uh, He is not the author of confusion, you say, let me get to the bottom of this, and you go into your word so you can get the truth of the matter and not the fact of the matter, right? I'm going to say something that's going to sound so contradictory. But if you understand the function of the Father, you'll see that it's not. There was a movement before, big faith movement. You got to have big faith. I'm going to say something that's going to sound so contradictory. 
No, you don't. You don't have to have big faith. Now, I can hear people saying, now, wait a minute now. That don't sound right. That's the devil. No. Quit calling everything the devil. Giving them too much credit. You don't need big faith. Why? Because Father said, I've given to every man a measure of faith. You don't need big faith. You have everything you need to, I mean, you have everything in that faith to supply what you need. If you have faith of a mustard seed, that's enough to move this mountain. Well, what is a mountain? Whatever that principality is that is before you, what you have that Father gave you is enough. It is sufficient. It is established. It is secure. It is confirmed. It is supported. So, no, you don't need to have this big faith. You need to know who you are, whose you are, and who your Elohim is. And because he said it, that is all you need. That's right. There was a, there was a big movement that went on years ago, years ago. You got to have big faith. You got to believe grand faith. No, I just got to believe what my father said. Now, I know that sounds contradictory because we've been taught to have big faith. When you believe, like nobody else believe, Father said, great is your faithfulness. Why? Because you trust and believe in him. He said that to the centurion who was not even a Yehudi, was not a Jew. He said, listen, if you just speak the word, then I know that he'll be healed. I'm a man of authority yet under authority. I tell people to come and come. When they go, they go. And Hamashiach out of his own mouth said, No greater faith have I seen in Jerusalem. Didn't say that that man had great or big or you got to have big faith. He said, Great is your faith. There's no greater faith. All he did was use what he had. And what did he have? Enough to believe that Hamashiach was who he said he was? All you have to do is believe with what you have in you that what he said to you, what he said, period, in his word is. He said, I am that I am. Well, what is I am? Whatever you need. It sounds so simple, yet so complex. But we get caught up when we speak it and we expect it to happen to you. Instant. Because truth be told, I've, I've done that before. I'm praying for healing. I want to have it right now. Because I'm reading the stories in the Bible of how uh, uh, Hamashiach prayed for them and instantly they were healed. Can they do it? Yeah. But oftentimes there is a lesson. i got to believe that, listen, when he said I was healed, I was healed from the get-go. Absolutely. I just got to go through the process. And the reason that the process is is so that you won't experience the symptoms of the illness again. Like, like in, in some cases. So, like, let's just say for, for type 2, there was there was the consequence of bad behaviors mm -hmm. that led you to that that conclusion. Mm -hmm. But the mercy of the Father kept you in it and uh, did not remove the thorn so that you would always be mindful of the process of staying what? In your manifested healed position. You are healed, but the process brings discipline. Sometimes people don't want discipline. Again, coming back to receiving the form of a promise, it will consume you. And this is, again, how you're going to be able to recognize the enemy giving you a false a, a, a version of it versus the Father giving you the fulfillment of it. Because the, the false version of it is going to come quicker. It is going to consume you. You cannot manage it. You cannot contain it. It's going to bring to you all the fruit of the flesh. That is the lust of the eye. That's going to be the, the frustration, the lack of peace. It's going to bring you all those things that makes you feel like it's too much. Like, like I know I wanted this, but I I don't think I want it. No, you, you it's took. too much to do, but you do took, work. You took a knockout version of your promise so that you can get there quicker. And it consumed you because you didn't allow the process to develop what was lying dormant in you so that you could sustain, maintain, and keep it. See, because the Father says that he is the one that gives all things good and perfect. Mm -hmm. He gives the thing. So anytime you label it good, it comes from the Father. 
But if it ain't good, meaning it is not producing good things for you. What does that word good mean? It means complete. Complete. Absolutely. Now, I just want to bring you to a a thought here real quick. Now, just, I know we're wrapping up, Mm -hmm. but here's the thing. When it comes to our faith, we have to be able to withstand the test of our faith. And we have them every single day. How do we realize whether we are successful in passing those tests or not? It's when your action and your behavior support the belief you started with before the test came. Mm. I'm going to say that again. It's Mm. when your action, your behavior, your attitude is consistent, stays in line with what you believed him for before the test came. If the minute the test came, now, here, here, what do you mean by test? Okay, you ask the Father for increase, and then all of a sudden, everything you had is being stretched. What do I mean stretched? Meaning, it has to go here, 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 and here, and it seems as if you don't have enough. Now, you pray for increase because you didn't have enough. But <laughs> yeah, what the Father, what he, and what he showed you is uh, opportunity for management. You said, no, I don't need to manage better. I just need more of this so that I can take care of this. He says, no, if you learn how to manage, right, you become faithful in your management with the little, then I can make you ruler of uh, of much because you have mastered the principle to keep and maintain much. If I give you much first, then much will kill you. Much will bring the opposite. That's why people say more money, more problems. You know why it's more problems for you? It's because you got much before you were developed to manage it. And all you did was take your nasty habits and your abundant place and you have bigger problems. Because the essence of it went with you. It's also the evidence that the enemy said, all I got to do is give you more. You're going to not only destroy yourself, but the name of the Father. Because you can't give a good report out of your bad management. You can't give a good report. Mm -hmm. Many of us are struggling right now because of the decisions we made in our yesterday. And we fought the Father when he gave us the same opportunities then to do right. We are under construction. Yes. He said, all I want you to do is learn. But what we keep doing is we get a, get get the relief. The Father delivers us because he knows if he don't deliver us, we're going to die in it. And he says, I got so much more for you. Right? I'm going to take what was meant for evil and use to the good. And he gives us a new opportunity. And what we do is we get excited because the relief, you know, the, the idea of it. Oh, the Father delivered me. I know that wasn't nobody but the Father who brought me out of that. Ooh, I'm telling you, I don't know how. That wasn't nothing but the Father. I prayed. I fasted. Boy, I called on the elders. Woo, I got in my word. And as soon as the answer showed up, you went back to the very thing you was doing before. And it came, you, you started fooling yourself. So as long as it was new, you was praising, you was happy, you was dancing. But when you got used to the answer, all right, you know, maybe somebody blessed you with something. Maybe, maybe you got the house in spite of. Maybe you got that car you needed in spite of. Maybe you got that promotion, that position in spite of. And now it's getting all normalized. You forgot you fasted for it. You forgot you prayed for it. You forgot what you what you what you had to sacrifice. You forgot what he was trying to teach you when he was filling the fields. When you said, "Father, if you deliver me out of this, I never do that again. I won't go and get no cash store loan. I won't go." You said that I'm a a, a, a lender and not a borrower. You said I'm a head and not the tail. And as soon as he rescued you out of it, you praised him, and then all of a sudden hard times came, and your first thought was, "Let me go get a, a, a cash store loan." Your first thought was, let me go get a new credit card. Your first thought was, let me go ask this person and that person. Your first thought, so what just happened? We're talking out of experience. I know. (laughs) What just happened? What happened was, the father rescued you from yourself that you may learn the lesson. And you got into your blessed place, sowing the same nasty seeds, but expecting a righteous result. Now tell me that ain't foolishness. Tell me that is not insanity. I, I think this is a good place to leave people to ponder until the next time we meet on what Father gave you as far as, uh, how did you say it exactly? Or something like that. 
no, I it's can't. I can't. Said, do you really said, have faith? It's, it's no, no. It, it was something you used. Oh, we gonna pick up on that. Are, are we? Are are you? Are you credible? There it is. That, that's, that the that's, Father finds you credible. That, that's the perfect place to leave that on because we're not giving an example. We're not giving any explanation. It's we're just something you have speak. to ponder upon. Does the Father find you credible? Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, uh -uh. Priest, you took oh, okay. me on that when you came in here talking about uh, it's is, is unbelievable. Yeah, when I said you got to bother you, Joey. She said, she said, <laughs> I had bust down She said, head. I will bob and yes, and she use said, my wings. You know wing. I'm unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> the Joe throwing off, boy. That, that's what happened mean. when you hang around us too. Like, well, I think Ms. Jones are already a little slow. She was just throwing off before. We all got a touch. <laughs> and then we got Everybody together, we all, all just, got a touch. we all just got slower. <laughs> <laughs> we got a touch, and it's called joy. On the person that grows, John Bill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Y'all, listen. I think this was an awesome, awesome way to pick back up on diving into faith because it's not just one dimensional. We're seeing how this word imuna uh, operates in every aspect of our life. Um, if something was said on today, y'all. I'm 
Let me know how you thought about the message today. Ms. Jones said she'd be there. Yeah. Well, tomorrow is actually my birthday, guys. Oh, tomorrow is John and Ben's birthday. Well, no, don't you come up there. You go celebrate your birthday. Celebration. I was out. I already got to get up early. Yeah, go take your cats to get vaccinated. Yeah, we, we just started, so no, you go celebrate your day of birth. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, my John Enfield is turning 48, y'all. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. She may say she's not, but 41, I'm telling you. 41. 41. Oh, she turned in 41. 52. I love it. Happy oh, birthday. Oh, she going to leave me hanging. <laughs> that cold blood. That's my job, man. I ain't going to dab on them. <laughs> she ain't going to dab me up on that. Happy and birthday. We're going to send a shout out to you. Hey, Shay Tiller. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Jenna, Shabbat Shalom. Jenna said happy birthday, Jenna and Bill. Thank you, Jenna. Yeah, Miss Jones said you getting older. She said you older than her. I ain't make that up either. All we can do is look to you. No, I'm not. She don't say that because you call her over 50. We just say 52. Uh uh, Miss Jones gone. I blame Miss Jones on that one. She not here to defend herself, so I can talk no. Oh, she said happy 68. See, I told you how to make that up. I told you. See? See? I'm young. Say, <laughs> talking about I'm always boosting somebody's age. Yep. I'm going to get younger. Oh, listen, y'all. We got we got some prayer requests, man. We got to lift up, man. There's a, just a, yes. uh, just lift up Quessa and, and Baby Austin and Zane and Elijah. You know, whatever's going on in this weather is affecting a number of people. And we just want to pray that the Father continues to extend the, the recovery process to the healing he's declared. And also just want to pray over the caretakers. It is so crucial in this, in this day and time. Because there are a lot of uh, demonic forces and, and agents that are looking to use the medical field of practices to cause harm to people. So we're just praying that those who are involved in the care um, will have the heart of the Father, will have the love of the Father, and will uh, not allow their personal lives and things they're going through to interfere with the work that they're doing in, in the service and the ministry of, of medicine. Well, y'all, with that being said, it's new in advance. You hope we all have an awesome Shabbat. Let, let, let's put John here in the picture. We got to see what day and what hour. We got to see the John here in the picture. What you doing for? What's the objective? Aki, what's the plan? There's one answer. Oh, I'm sorry. The most high and do is command. You just want to scream in there? Oh, she just want to jump here to be seen with me in there. Y'all come back now, you hear? I'm gonna see if I can get one there and see if we get a hold. Hey, she keeps trying to get a birthday to get a hold. Yeah. Just when they know he was a baby, that's when he showed up. You should have seen it. Cause I don't know your hook. I don't know your intention. Good intention, thank you. We love y'all. I'm loving my great street going on right here. Y'all, say I got a little bit of wisdom. <laughs> y'all have an awesome spot. We will see you table. Still next water. time. The gates still languish. We finding ourselves. We learning our language. And it ain't no stopping it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to fellowship with you and to grow in our knowledge of the Lord. We hope to see you next time at the gate called Beautiful.